Well, hello, YouTube, and welcome back to the all-new Channel 2012. Today, as you can see, I have fired up the Apple Power Mac G5. Many of you probably recognize this computer from the setup video I did last year. And since I did that video, I've seen a lot of questions both about the G5 and PowerPC-based Mac PCs in general. And I thought today I would just do a point-by-point, -point, frequently asked questions video to address and demystify all those points and more. Apple first introduced the Power Mac G5 in the year 2003, when it was just getting out of a bit of a lull in design. The G5 rose out of the ashes of Apple design failure, like the iBook G3 and the Power Mac G4, which themselves were believed to have been inspired by the 8th generation Buick Riviera. By the early 2000s, Apple pretty much knew they didn't have a whole lot of cards left in the PowerPC deck, but they wanted to keep consumer interest alive, and since they were deep in the pants of IBM and PowerPC, they put out this one last hurrah, crazy and futuristic case design that would finally bring their desktop computers into the 21st century. While this computer's internals may have been less powerful than a Pentium 4 computer from the time, its case design would live on for over a decade. Yes, the case. Weighing it at nearly 50 pounds, this computer makes sure that the operator knows that this is a serious case. Clearly, a lot of attention was paid to the design of the cases. You've got easy access for replacement of the hard drives up here. You simply pull this fan out for easy access in order to replace the RAM as well. It even has gigabit ethernet for fast network transfer. In one word, the hand holding. This computer is like a kid who's afraid to jump into the swimming pool. Everything from installing an operating system to upgrading the video card is going to require the help of a regular computer to get the job done. But that's just the beginning. You've got piss poor software selection because most modern software is only compiled for x86 versions of OS X or Windows. Also, despite that huge case and the enormous power supply that it has inside, it doesn't actually have a lot of processing power to show for it. Web browsing is just as sluggish as that Pentium 4 computer that I showed in my installing Windows 8 on an old Pentium 4 computer video from last spring. And speaking of other operating systems, the fact that you'll be primarily using this with OS X means you'll have to deal with OS X's obnoxious mouse acceleration, which makes the simple task of using the mouse into a giant chore. But it doesn't stop there. Hardware compatibility is pretty mediocre too. Even though it has like five FireWire ports, you'd think it would have some compatibility with FireWire devices, but it doesn't. I tried hooking up my old Canon FireWire camera to it, which in its defense is appropriate to the era in which this computer was released, but it didn't work. Even no-brainer stuff like hooking up a microphone can't be done because the microphone jack is totally bogus. And if you think you're just going to unscrew the motherboard and put a new one in and do some case modding, it can be done, but it's very, very difficult, and it involves a lot of cutting of the case. And even some stuff after that won't work, like that fancy power button and power light on the front. Like it or not, this case is really more or less stuck with this computer. The video card that it comes with sucks really bad, too. It looks like it has a second port, so you'd think you'd be able to hook up a second monitor, 
but take a closer look at some stupid proprietary port for special unpowered Apple monitors so that they can be plugged straight up to here without having to plug in mains power to the display. That video card is a NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200 Ultra, and not only can it barely play high-definition video, it gets choked up on little things like Macromedia Flash, and you can almost forget about installing another operating system like Linux on there, because compatibility with this video card and NVIDIA cards in general is pretty poor. And, as if to add insult to injury, the process of upgrading a video card on one of these is painful and almost not even worth it. To start out with, you have to find a card on the very, very short list of compatible cards. Then, you have to find the unofficial BIOS upgrade for said card, plug that card into a regular computer that has an AGP slot, boot it from a special firmware upgrade CD, and only then can you insert it into one of these computers to use it. Hear that sound? That's the sound of the Power Mac G5 laughing at you while you make plans to upgrade it. So what software will and will not work? Well, in a nutshell, Apple software, circa 2008 and earlier is fair game, as is the transmission torrent client, a basic YouTube player, VNC software, GIMP, and vintage game console emulators. Microsoft Office 2008 and earlier works okay too, but there is no intermediate video editing software available. XBMC support was discontinued a few years ago. VLC support has been discontinued as well. And only one web browser is still supported and up to date, but Unfortunately, many plugins have been discontinued. The newest version of Flash Player available is Flash Player 10, and only if 10.4 Fox version 17 is used. Versions after that are broken and do not support plugins any longer. Some Java and Silverlight support is also rumored to be available, but I have not tried it because I don't use Java or Silverlight. So what operating systems will and will not work? Well, obviously, OS X 10.5.8 Leopard. And there is some limited Linux support, too. I have tried Ubuntu, Debian, Mint PPC, and I've had stupid problems with all of them. The biggest problems being lack of support for the NVIDIA display adapter and lack of support for the sound and lack of flash player, and in the case of Debian, it has a really strange and weird bug where it loses all control of the fans and ramps them up to full blast after some time. So while for some PowerPC Mac PCs, there may be some Linux support that may be able to breathe new life into these, for the most part, many people are going to be stuck using OS X 10.5.8 and PowerPC OS X software. Yes and no. No, because for the day-to-day -day tasks that most of us use a computer for, web browsing, YouTube, Flash Player, intermediate video editing, this thing unfortunately really falls flat on its face. If you have a machine with enough hardware compatible with Linux, you might have a little bit better luck. As it is with OS X, it can still be useful in a limited capacity for specific purpose tasks. In this case, I found, interestingly enough, that while this scanner is incompatible with uh, Windows 64-bit, it will work with OS X. This is actually the most modern computer I have access to that I have been able to get this Canon CanoScan N1240U scanner to work with. 
Software support is at a dead end. As we've seen in uh, recent months and years, VLC, XBMC, Firefox, Microsoft Office, all sorts of stuff like that. Support's just being discontinued left and right because there's no point in making that software for a, a dead platform that nobody's using. Even in gaming on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 that had been PowerPC based for years, probably for the same reason that Apple went with PowerPC for this computer, is on its last leg as we've seen with the PS4 and Xbox One moving to the x86 architecture in the same way that Apple has. So the usefulness of a machine like this in modern times is really dependent on you and your needs and the software that you need to use. And unfortunately for a lot of us, that means moving on to better hardware. The good news is that you can get for the price that you probably paid for one of these within the last year or two, a very decent x86 based Windows computer that you'll be able to do a whole lot more with, much more efficiently with regards to power. And the only thing you'll miss about the Power Mac G5 is its fancy case.